Okay, so this question says, a film of soapy water on top of plastic cutting board. Let me start just uh, drawing a picture so that I have a correct mental image in mind. So I have some kind of uh, surface, plastic cutting board. I don't think it matters what it is. Because <laughs> uh, do I need to know its index or refraction? Oh, you know, I might have to. Um, so I have a soapy water which has index of refraction of 1.33. Um, I could just to treat this material as some n greater than 1.33. Yeah, I think I need to. Because um, this is, uh, so the, the analysis I need to do is what's called a fi thin film uh, interference. And in thin film interference, uh, you have to consider and worry about two things. One is any phase shift on reflection. And the second thing is um, path length difference accounting for index or refraction. So uh, I think that's what the hint will probably talk about if I open that up. Uh, what phase difference gives, cons oh, okay, the, yeah, yeah, we do have to worry about that, into two, Ass oh, yeah, assume that the plastic has a higher index of refraction, yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to assume anyway, so hint doesn't really tell you these things, uh, well, um, it's fine, there's a textbook section that does thin film interference, take a look at that, I'm just going to go ahead and do this, because I know how to do it, so let me just to finish drawing this picture, um, they are telling us that, um, if it is illuminated perpendicular to its surface. So we are imagining some light that's coming in more or less perpendicularly. That makes the geometry considerations easier because for physical distance, uh, we can just give um, film, yeah, 235 nanometer. We can just um, say that that 235 nanometer is that uh, thickness of the film. And what we have to consider is, uh, let me just blow up this part of the picture here. So that part of the picture, blown way up, shows you something like this. Light coming in, one reflects from here, another reflects from here. And you are really comparing, well, how do these... Um, do these two rays compare uh, between them? Um, one reflected from the front surface and one reflected from the back surface. Whatever happened before the light hit here doesn't matter because it's common to these two beams. So there's three things that can contribute to the difference in phase um, of them. So let me just take into account um, those um, three things uh, which come from these two things that I mentioned. So one is the reflection here. So let me label that delta V1 for the beam 1. So you are going from n equals 1 to n equals 1.33. So there will be a phase shift on reflection, the pi phase shift. Um, that's it for phase, um, phase of the, the, the phase factor that's coming into beam 1. For beam 2, you have to consider two sources. One is the what's coming from this double pass through the thin film. So you have to consider that light is traveling the total distance of 2D. So normally you would say, okay, then the, the phase difference is the distance divided by the wavelength times uh, 2 pi. Uh, this, ref this relates to the uh, number of cycles multiplying it by 2 pi, converts to radian for the common unit comparison. But the thing that you have to worry about is that this lambda, we can't just use the given, um, or when we, um, how do I put it? The way we refer to wavelength is the wavelength in vacuum. So the, that's what the wavelength that they expect you to answer with here. But the wavelength that matters for this path length is not the wavelength in vacuum, but it's the wavelength within the um, material. So it should really be something like uh, lambda n. And what lambda n is, that's the wavelength in vacuum divided by index of refraction, I think. 
I think that's right. So you have to take that into account. So let me just start writing this out for the phase shifts going into the beam two. So there's going to be this factor that comes from the additional path length, double pass through the thin film, 2D divided by, and I'll just put this all in, lambda divided by n times 2 pi. So that's a one source of a phase change. This is the other source of phase change. And since uh, we are being told to assume that index of refraction of plastic is higher, this is another reflection on uh, from lower to higher index of refraction. So there will be another phase shift here. So for the total difference, what you are looking at is the phase shift um, attributed to the, the uh, going into second beam minus phase shift going into first beam. And here's a lucky thing. This pi phase factor cancels out. So somehow if you happen to forget that the phase shift on reflection for this question, you'll still get the right answer. You'll get lucky. Because uh, the only uh, portion of the contribution to the phase difference that matters is the one coming from the path length difference. And for this um, phase difference, what we are saying is, well, we want this to be constructive interference, meaning uh, we want this to be some integer times 2 pi, so that um, so that they are in phase. And I guess I can see that if, uh, so, you know, so after this, you just try out different values of n. It could be 0, it could be 1, it could be 2, and so on. Now, if m is equal to 0, right-hand side being 0, so left hand side, um, I think, uh, so it, it's just not gonna be satisfied, I think. Um, yeah, so m equals zero, yeah, it won't work unless uh, unless d is zero as well. So, but that's not the case, so let's not do that. So let's consider the next uh, possible value of n, that would be m equals one. So if m is equal to one, uh, let me see if I can solve this expression for lambda. Uh, I'm in the interest of time, I'm just going to do that calculation in my head. You can, I don't know, pause the video and double check my calculation. So what lambda is going to be is, by the way, let me just pre-cancel two pi's there. It will be 2nd over m is equal to 1, so 1. So that's going to be lambda, n is the index of refraction of the soapy water, d is its thickness. Yeah, yeah, I think I got everything. So let me plug in those numbers into O from alpha. 2 times 1.33 times the thickness, 235 nanometer. Um, yeah. So that is the wavelength that would have first order... Um, uh, first order the interference maximum at that thickness. And what you're kind of assuming is the all the other wavelength would have less intensity. So, yeah, so I guess this is actually exactly that phrasing. Would they have greater intensity at this wavelength, the 624, uh, so 625.1 nanometer? Yeah, so that should be the answer. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, yeah, I guess, uh, um, yeah, and you are kind of assuming that all the other wavelengths um, would have lower intensity, which is, I think, right enough, uh, that you, you are not worrying about possibility of, like, uh, um, the light with, uh, I guess, uh, double this, uh, no, half its frequent, half this wavelength, uh, also having uh, the, the, also having the the interference maximum one you know if it's half of this wavelength then it's outside the visible spectrum so where it's outside the range that we are paying attention to right now